All right, what if I told you that you could become an expert and actually a master of Figma in a couple of minutes and by breaking all of the rules and just jumping into what actually matters, you can start generating sales, leads and clients, customers for your business instead of spending time learning all of the shortcuts and all the intricacies of everything that it can do. It's almost like buying an iPhone and then spending hours and days just learning everything that you'll never use on it, right? Instead of just downloading your apps and then off you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to break all the rules. We're going to jump in and then we're going to wait for the comments of the hardcore Figma fans to be like, this guy doesn't understand how to use Figma, which by the way, we have other tutorials as well. Without further ado, <laughs> let's dive in. I'm going to click F. That is how you create a frame, which is basically like everything that is within the frame. When you export the frame, it'll stay there. So like a background image you want to use a frame for. You also use them when you design landing pages, you can uh, keep command down and you can move this to just sort of change that. But first I'm going to choose the right one that I want to use. So uh, the reason why we use something like MacBook Pro 16 is because when we export the image, we want it to be around the same size. So 584 times 676, that is about the same size that we'll use in the actual funnel builder, the website builder, whatever software you're using. And so we want it to be the same so that uh, the page load speed is gonna be faster because it doesn't have to like reshape or resize the image when loading. So you're gonna increase the load speed there. One thing that you might wanna understand before you dive in, and we're not gonna spend too much time on this, is just understanding a little bit of the editor here. So to the left, you'll see frames. So frame one, frame two, inside of frame, one, you'll see that I have a ton of individual images. So now that opens, I can see all of those. If I want these, for an example, to go above these other ones, then yes, they would be above here as well. If you want to drag them here, you're gonna see that they fall underneath. And then if I reverse that and I want them to be grouped, I click Command and G to group them. And then I can group these as well. And then maybe I wanna have a shadow, I can click Effects and I can uh, change the shadow settings here, which we'll talk about here in a little bit more later. But let's say I just want these to be 100, 10%, and then move this down uh, up to maybe minus 50. And then these, because they're on top, I wanna distance them and separate them a little bit more. So I'll do 100 as well, but maybe I'll do minus 50, but this one be a little bit stronger. So like minus, actually let's do 250. See what that looks like and then take this down to 30, 20. So anyways, you can see kind of how the editor works there, but let's go back to frame two. So again, the reason why we want to have this uh, sizing is so that is similar to what we're going to use in our page builder. You could also use 14, you could use um, 1920 times 1080, which is also okay. One thing that, by the way, you can see I don't have a background image um, behind this. And there's a reason for that because I want to create a graphic similar to this for an example. So let's say I want to move this in here. I would just uh, move this up here or what I can do is I can just go uh, this one, command X, cut it out, click on this, command V, paste it in and now it's on top of it. So then I can drag this up. Boom. Let's say I want that one to go um, behind me. I can use the, the corner radius, let's say 20. And then I can sort of get this um, nice little effect. Uh, maybe I even want this part to go a little bit behind me as well, but then this will stay there with my shadow. This one, I don't like that it goes outside there. So what I can do is just drag this in and also use radius on this, maybe 40. Yes, that will look much better. Then drag this in a little bit as well. So we get that nice little rounded corner. Now, one thing you can do is you can use the color picker here to pick, to find colors from, from the images that you're using. Uh, so I could use that one or I could use this and just move this up if I want to have it something like this. All right. So that is kind of how to create graphics within this one way to do it. But now let's create an actual background image. So uh, you see fill here. Layer is just the pass through of the entire uh, layer, the frame. But fill is, if you click here, you can see I untoggle and, and I can see what it looks like with and without. Which, by the way, I can also change the background by clicking this. If we want to see on a darker background. Um, but the frame, the background for the, the frame, I want to, I could go with a, a bright one. 
that could work. Or I can go with a blue one, depending on the branding of the style that I want to use. Or I could go with something like this. But I like to do is start with the image and find my color palette from there. So maybe even something like this or something uh, dark like this. Uh, if I do, then I want to separate the background from it and see kind of what it would look like. So I'm going to keep this here. You can also see that now um, this rectangle right here, maybe we want to do 30. So we get that. Yeah, you can see that that's, that's much better. Now for the backgrounds, I like to create a new one and then remove this to uh, start playing around with the background graphics that I want to use. So um, the way I did that is just click the frame, command C and V, C, V, keep it down, and then it's gonna copy paste it. So for this, we could do something, um, there's a couple of things that you can do here. So one way is to just create a rectangle, um, and then we could do maybe like this, and then choose a little bit brighter of a color. Then you can move it out, as long as you don't go with the cursor over, it stays within here. So I can do this, I can choose, you know, to create, if I keep shift down, drag this, it's gonna keep the proportions and I could create something like this. But one thing that I like to do is use a, uh, a linear gradient. So here's where you can have radial, um, which is basically just, you know, creating this sort of effect or use linear where you have this, you can change the, the direction of the radiant color. So I'm gonna do gradient, sorry. I'm gonna do something like this and then I'll move it up here. And then maybe we want it to be a little bit more visible. So I'll do something like this and then copy paste it. You can click uh, flip horizontal, flip vertical to get, you can even use command and drag this to something like this maybe and move it where you want it to be. So now I could, by the way, also create tons of mini dots of these and just move them around until I'm happy with what I'm looking for, depending on, again on the, the actual branding of the page. And then once you move this over um, and you add your text and everything, these things are not gonna be as, as prominent in the design and so therefore it's gonna look better than what it does now. Now, one thing I could do also is, let me copy this over. I can mark all of these, right? Mark all of them, click effects and create a layer blur and do something like 500. So now you can see I have this mesh gradient of colors. Now, let's say I wanted to have more of them. So let's do three of these and then maybe even make them a little bit bigger, but then do green of these, but a mesh of those. Oops. So I'm gonna do something like that. Um, I can even do gradient, yeah. But then it's not gonna matter too much because I'm using a uh, layer blur. So that's too much, I can't really see anything. 300, to me, they're too small, so I could make them bigger and maybe move them up like that, depending on, again, kind of what you're looking for. So that is another way to create graphics, your background images and stuff. And then another thing you can do is add a rectangle, click in R, rectangle, maybe do like something like this, drag it out, move like this, boom. And then we're gonna do white linear, move this up here maybe, and then this to the corner, and then drag this down to 10%, depending on how strong you want that to be. So maybe 15, and now you have this effect. So if you're using something like an image like this, you can just paste it. And then usually what you wanna do is just move this behind, maybe in the middle, so it has like this diagonal effect, and that would look great. Now, some of you might have questions, what about the sales page? So if you're looking to, to add into your high level or funnels.so, it doesn't really matter the software that you're using. What you wanna do is you wanna group things. So like this right now isn't a group. So I'm just gonna make sure that these are all marked and click Command G and then export PNG so that it, we don't get the, the background. So if you, if you get the background, it's because you're using JPEG, for example. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and then this I can use to get the, um, the background exported. So export, I can use PNG, I can use JPEG, but the background doesn't really matter. But let's do a few more effects. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna add a text effect to the background. So let's do something like, you know, freedom funnels. 
freedom funnels. Maybe we even add these there. We center them. Uh, let's make them a little bit bigger. 292. Um, here's the line height, by the way, so you can drag this. One thing I love about Figma is you can just drag things like size. You can drag and see. Okay, I like that. This, prefer to be like this. I'm gonna try to, to do two things. One is linear. So I'm just gonna choose something like this. And then I'm also going to reduce the layer of it. So get it down to maybe 15. And now that could be a background image that I wanna use as well. Now, once you have a group, so I'm telling you I'm, I'm going fast. So hopefully you're taking notes and screenshots. One thing you can do when you have groups or even frames is you can go to selection colors and you can update the one so you can see, okay, this one, I wanna change here. So I, I can just go and change it here. And if you have multiple of them, it's gonna change the, all the ones that are the same. For an example, let's copy this over. And instead of having these right here, we're going to remove the fill, but add a stroke, which is the outline of it, the border. So I'm gonna choose the same color. You can see document colors, the same color, make it 100% pass through, maybe not that dark, but then make it linear so we can get this little effect. And I actually, what I want is I want it for both. Um, so I'm gonna delete this and just keep it, wait, let me double click, linear, make sure that it actually looks good on one of them first. There we go. Move that up, freedom and then maybe, maybe move it to the side a little bit. So maybe we move this one here, freedom, and then funnels down there and center it. Which is, by the way, another thing you can do. So let's say you have two things like this. I'm gonna copy and move it down here. And you wanna center them. What you can do is just mark both of them, right? And then go up here to, uh, to align center and then center. So now, obviously, now they would be on top of each other, but if you go here, boom, left, center, right here, for example, center, boom, now they're centered and aligned with each other. So that's another thing you can do. Now I'm gonna show you one more because let's say you wanted to have something like, I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Actually, we're gonna get rid of everything because let's say you're not happy. You, you wanna try something else. So maybe you'll do, maybe you wanna have something custom. So let's do that. You can click somewhere on the page and then you can create your own mask of uh, any object. Let's say you want to have something like this that goes up in value, boom, click like this and back to the main one, click enter. And now you can either fill this with, let's say blue you Can add a linear, you can drag this, choose the direction of it. Or what you can do is, and by the way, once you have that, let's say you want to move, the, uh, remove the opacity down to you know, 50, you wanna have this as the background so that when you move uh, images over, you can kind of start to see what that looks like in the background. But you can also choose, instead of fill, you could choose stroke and just get that one. Then you can make it bigger, right? So if you just want this to be something similar, but you want it to be from one side to the other, you can also do that, right? I mean, you can do both. You can also make the fill, you can make something like, this, let's say. That is um, one thing you can do as well. Now, a couple of more things that I wanna show you. Uh, I told you I'm gonna go, and you're gonna learn a lot and become a master in a few minutes in this. So I wanna share with you how to add layers on top of images to sort of create this. Uh, let's say that this would be, you know, this would be, uh, let's actually use something like two, 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 two. And then for the background, we're gonna use one B, one B, one B, right? So. Actually, let's make this a little bit brighter. And then let's say I want me to be, I don't know, uh, do I look like a construction guy? I don't know. What you can do is you can use plugins in Figma, which I love, by the way. So you can go plugins, find more plugins. I'm gonna use Pexels, which I, I'll be able to get uh, images with. So Pexels, unable to run plugin in this file. That is interesting as I'm shooting this video. Reload the thing. Oh, because of Wi-Fi. okay. Where's my phone at? So then what I'll do is I'll use the plugin called Pexels and I can type in for an example, homes. And then let's say we wanna use something that is pretty clean, this one maybe. 
Um, you can see that it's being added here. So if I drag this over, just like layers, I add it on top of it. So now if I reduce this, I'm gonna see more of the image, right? But I can keep it at 100 for now and then keep linear so that I can move this and change where I want the color layer to be stronger, right? So if I want the text on this side, I'm gonna move the layer to be stronger maybe up there and then drag it all the way down maybe here. So here I would maybe put it to 97. So we still have some see-through, but then here I would move it to, let's see. Uh, I always set it first to 100 and then move it back to see kind of like, okay, this is where I'd be happy uh, keeping it at. For now, actually, let's do this. Let's do 100 there and do 75 here. I kind of like this more for this, for this one in particular. Now, if I add a text, I'm just going to click T, text, make this home headline Ipsum Dollar Elite. I don't know if that's Latin. Uh, I'll do man rope maybe, uh, bold, set this to 92, 72, auto, this could be at 80, uh, maybe 90, and then copy it, get this down to maybe half, so 36, regular, and then this could be set to auto, and then we can even use a plug plugin called Lorem Ipsum for this and generate the text for us. Uh, auto generate, we don't need all of it. So I'll just delete that. Maybe set this to 60, but down to 32. So then maybe 50 and then maybe more like this. And then button, you get the point. So I'm gonna set this to something like this. And then actually let's try. There we go, 20, too much, 10. And then add a button there. So book your free call. Click there to sort of cut the extra space off. Now I can again mark both of them. So shift, click the button as well, center, and center, there we go. And then I'll just click text, command B for bold. And that's a little bit too big. There we go. Anyways, hopefully this was helpful as a beginner's guide to get you up to speed on what really matters. And again, you wouldn't export this part, you would export this. So there we go. Delete everything you don't want exported. And now you export this image, you upload it in here, and you get this uh, final build out inside of the editor, the funnel builder, the website builder. So you don't have to build everything out, you do one section at a time. And the most important part is that you have proven templates that convert. And so you can just, oh, okay, I need a, an icon. Let me go in here to get the icon. I'll click, you know, this, by the way, I would keep this. Shift, select color, maybe, radius and then you can add icons like from the plugin so iconly you drag in the icons that you want to use let's say i want to use this drag it in there close this down move it outside of this delete it and then set the color selection color to be the color that you want to use right you want it to be like this you choose linear boom and then you group it you export it so anything that you want to have customized you first create it inside of Figma, you group as an image, and then you export it, you upload it as a PNG inside of funnels.so. So boom, you go image, there we go. You choose the width, the height of it, and then align it to the left. There you go. Very simple. Hopefully this was helpful. With that said, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and this is just kind of like, I don't know, I guess a hook for the video. Bye.